Hey everybody, welcome back to the craft room. I am so glad that you could join me. I hope everyone had a wonderful Memorial Day. Even if you stayed home and did absolutely nothing, which is kind of what we did. It was kind of nice to have a day to do absolutely nothing and not even go out of town. Yes, which is rare for us. But anyway, I thought I would, let me adjust this a wee bit. That's a little better. Thought I would hop into the craft room here and show you guys a couple of finished projects that I have. If you follow me on Instagram, I've already shared these. If you don't follow me on Instagram, I will put a link down in the description box below where you can find me on Instagram. I always post pictures of my finished projects when I get them done, which is usually way before I make a video about it. So anyway, the first project that, oh, and when I'm done, I'm going to show you guys something that y'all might want to know or might want to see. And I will share where you can find more information. But anyway, the first project that I have finished is this Tunisian stocking hat. This is a forest green and purple. Turned out really good, I think. Here is the inside for those inquiring minds like me who would like to know. Honestly, these could be reversible. They could be worn either way. <laughs> and this was done with the um, in the round method starting or using the uh, cabled hook. I, this, I don't think I use this one. I think I use the next size up. But anyway, super easy to do. I'm in the process of perfecting it, so maybe I can show you guys someday how to do it. The other project that I did was just a random thing and I did this in just a few hours believe it or not but it's it's kind of wonky but it is also Tunisian knit which explains the wonkiness because for me Tunisian knit is always tighter than you know simple stitch or any other type of stitch that I do anyway the other reason it is kind of wonky is because I was uh, making a picture project and I know you're not supposed to carry your yarn any more than like three stitches but I was in the I don't care I'm not cutting my yarn mood so my yarn does stretch multiple stitches probably much farther than it should have but quite honestly the back doesn't look that bad and this is actually just a small fragment of a different project it is actually a knit cowl that has aliens and rocket ships on it I just did the alien I just did only a portion of the uh, pattern which is a free pattern on Ravelry I will link that down in the description box if you would like to check that out as well it does have the graph and that's how I was able to do this so and this was also done with the same purple and forest green as the hat because I finished this and I had some time to waste and I was like why not I want to see if I can do it and I can so here is my little alien swatch that I did. I do have a little boo-boo. I was trying to carry my purple yarn. So it kind of looks like he's got a thumbs up over here. But that's not actually a stitch. That is where the yarn got in the way. So what I do, I did a Tunisian extended simple stitch on the top and the bottom to kind of help it to keep from curling as much. And then did the knit stitch following the graph in the pattern. Here is the back side. Like I said, it doesn't look too bad. You can see where this was carried all the way across because that's all purple underneath there. But I don't think it turned out too bad being first time. Actually, this is about the second time I've ever done a Tunisian graph like this. So yeah, I don't think that turned out too bad. This is a project for me. It'd be really big for a cowl, but yeah, I don't know. Maybe I'll add it to the rest of my funky wonky squares someday and we'll have a really weird blanket. <laughs> but those are the two projects that I have finished. The other project that I'm going to show you, if you remember, I was working on that Geo scarf. I think this is the pattern for it right here. It was my Tunisian Thursday project that I was sharing with you guys. Just right here. This is also a free pattern from to that it's right there crochetkim.com and it is the geo scarf 
you can go check that out if you'd like. I did share a link in my Tunisian Thursday post. If you remember, I was working with the... It's not in there. I don't know what I did with it. But it was the uh, Favorite Stripes. I had started working on that with the Favorite Stripes. And somehow, somewhere, I got messed up. And being the way that you do the, you know, the geo sections of it, somehow I ended up with too many stitches. And I wasn't quite sure how to fix it, so I frogged it. And I tried it again, and it was not working very well at all. So, I was like, okay, maybe I need a bigger hook. Because if you remember, I was using the uh, double-ended eye hook, the bamboo one that I had in my bag. So I was like, okay, fine. So I grabbed this, I put the shortest cable on it. This is the a Denise hook that I got to finish my shawl and I love this thing like I said I want to get more these are amazing and I decided to but I decided to try this bigger hook and to see if I could make it work with some different yarn that I had when I decided to make it bigger because I was really frustrated with it using that hook I chained the 35 and this this thing was literally probably 18 inches long which is a bit big for a scarf or wide so I bumped it down to like 25 again. It is still plenty wide. However, I don't like it. I don't like it at all. This thing is kicking my butt like really bad. So this is what I have so far. It looks okay with the bottom here and it looks okay here. But once I got back up to this, I don't know. It's just... I'm guessing it's okay, but just the way that these stitches are up here... And the way that when you go from the uh, Tunisian reverse to the knit in the back to the Tunisian reverse, it leaves holes for me. And I just, I think it looks kind of wonky weird. Like I said, and I've, I got distracted here and, no, I'm all the way back to the end. So I haven't frogged this. This is where I stopped. I need to continue on and finish this little geo swatch here, which will look like the one on the bottom. But for right now, this project is going to get tabled because it is just annoying me. <laughs> I will get back to it. Whoops. I'll get that in a minute. It fell on the floor. I will get back to it maybe at another time. And I will also file this pattern right here. I'll put it away in a minute. But for now, that project is going to get filed away. I will get back to it hopefully at another time. Now, what I want to show you guys... And this will be the remainder of the video. I don't know how long it will take. Hopefully not too long, but it probably will. But anyway, I am making a hat in the round, bottom up, using the four double-ended Tunisian crochet hooks. I am using this yarn right here. This is Loops and Threads. What is it? Soft and shiny, and the colorway is Parte. I've never used this before. This is some that my sister gave me, and I, I really like it. <laughs> I am using, let me slide this over a minute so I can grab this pattern. As a reference, I'm not following the pattern exactly, as a reference for stitch numbers and decrease information, I'm using this uh, Tunisian ribbed hat pattern. This is a free pattern on Yarnspirations. There we go, Tunisian ribbed hat. I said this is a free pattern on Yarn Inspirations. I am just using this pattern for the number you cast on, which is 76. And then 6 inches, and then you start your decrease. That's all I'm using that pattern for. It seems to be working just fine so far. There's enough stretch in this yarn that I don't think it's going to be a problem. I am using, pardon me, supper. I am using... And this is not the hook that I started it actually with this. No need to. I just, I wanted to. But then I decided that yarn is too slicky. This was driving me nuts. But I wanted to try it with the double endeds. But this is a 5 millimeter, which I believe is an H. And I have, when I took that out, I went back and I put my double endeds in here. Now let me show you a little trick before I get started. Now I'll show that to you later. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to have to tilt this down so you're probably going to see my laptop and my lap and I don't know what else you're going to see but nothing inappropriate I promise. But I'm going to go ahead and finish this off and then I'm going to show you and I know I'm not starting the project. I'm in the middle of the project. I'm only about 
two inches into the project. I am just doing the simple Tunisian at this point and I will show you how I go around and how I join and go back. Now this is a method that I learned earlier this year. I do believe that finding the information on using the cabled hooks to do in the round had a light bulb moment for me in how to get to the end and go back with this. I was doing it incorrectly, I'm pretty sure, but the instructions are kind of vague. So anyway, like I said, I'm going to tilt this down so I don't have to work my project up here and we will finish off with the return stitch. I'm working on the return stitch. Here is my beginning stitch right here. I am clear over here with the return stitch and then I will go back around and show you how I join this when I get to the other end. So let's see if we can do this. Oh, let me turn around on my chair. Okay. Now, this is not a tutorial. I am just, you know, working this project and showing you, you know, how I am doing it, which is different than I've done it before, because once I learned that other method, like I said, it was kind of a light bulb moment, and it was like, oh, that makes more sense than the way I was doing it. And honestly, the edge definitely looks a lot neater. Than it did before. So when you get to the end of the one, set that down, put that loop on there, and just just yarn over, pull through two like you normally would. This is a lot like working with DPNs, which basically it is. These are the DPNs with the hooks, aka double-ended Tunisian. This would be D E T S, double-ended Tunisian, double-ended Tunisian D. D-E-T-H. There we go. Double-ended Tunisian hook. <laughs> and like I said, these are H. These are the Clover brand. I picked mine up at Joann's. They run about $11 a piece, I believe. So I got one more to go after this. Make sure you just pull through two, not three, Anna. Yarn over, pull through two, not three. This this yarn put together with this hat is definitely a party. There is no like definite striping pattern <laughs> that I am seeing so far. It is amazing, and the the uh, color strips on these are very short. All right, three hooks down. This is the last hook. And trust me, this doing this method gets easier with practice. The first few times I did it, I felt so awkward and, you know, like I had two left hands. It's kind of like having two left feet, but it was just a pain. So, I'm almost back to my beginning stitch. And you do have to be very careful that you don't miss anything, like stitches. I did miss a stitch earlier. All right, there's my first loop. I'm just going to pull it up. I did miss a stitch earlier. Let me see if I can find that missed stitch. It's kind of has a wonky spot. I noticed it and I was already two rows away from it and believe me, I was not going to frog to go back and fix it. Well, it's it's good enough that <laughs> Anna can't even find it at the, oh, there it is. Right there. See that really long stitch? It's a purple stitch, or is it the pink stitch? It's a really long pink stitch right there. <laughs> I just, since I skipped it, I was two rows up. I just made a simple Tunisian down two rows and pulled it up. So it did fill in the gap. It made a little wonky spot there, but I had to look for it. And if you don't know, you just it looks like my yarn got twisted or something. But it put me back to the correct number of loops on my hook. Alright, so we're back to the first one. And all we're going to do is Tunisian simple stitch, put about 19 on each hook. Six, seven, eight... Nine, ten, two, four, six, eight. That's eleven. 
12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, uh oh, another boo boo, but it's easily fixed. See there, I pulled through two instead of just one, two actually loops, so we're going to fix it, and you'll never know that I did that. You just simple Tunisian in the first one, and you simple Tunisian in the second one, and it looks absolutely normal. Perfect. I think there's an extra stitch. 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12, 14, 15, 16, 17, 8, 19. Perfect. All right, that'll fit easily on the hook. I'm going to grab my next one, and we're going to continue on. Fingers are getting warm with the next 19 loops. So, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, and 19. And you might think, why are you doing 19? Well, this has 76 loops total, or it's supposed to. And 19, or 76 goes into 4 19 times. So, we're in our third one. And if you don't put the same amount on each hook, it's not going to matter. Five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen. 17, 18, looks about good, 19, and I try to keep my little pinky finger always as like a stopper at the end of the hook, that way it doesn't slide off the other end, and that's how I do that, I just, that's just my method. Alright, last hook, so we're going to go, that's getting heavy, <laughs> and awkward, so there's one, two, Three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. A moment of truth. Am I correct? There's ten. Two, four, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. 12, oops, careful, 13, I keep grabbing the next loop, 14, 15, 16, I got too many loops, 17, 18, 19, there's 20, now you have to make sure that you don't miss you stick that on there. You don't miss that loop right there. That could be a booger to see and to get the needle into. Not needle. This is a hook. Get the hook into. I think that makes 21. So I might have too many loops. I don't know. 19, 19, 19, and 21. Let's add that up. 19 times 3 plus 21 equals, nope, 78. So we got 78 loops. I think I'm only supposed to have 76. Oh, the pattern says 76, but I wrote in 78, so I'm going to call it okay. And, so, here we are. We need to somehow join right here. And what we do, like I said, this is not a tutorial. I am not, you know, showing you how to do this. But, those two loops on your first hook, that orange one and that orange one, you're going to go in behind those with the hook that you're working with 
I'm going to yarn over, pull through those two carefully. Come on. Do we have everything? I'm going to pull through those two, and you're also going to pull through that first loop on the, the working hook. So you're technically yarning over and pulling through three. Now try and not make that so super tight and then you will just yarn over and pull through two all the way back to the beginning. And if you notice my stitch marker there is my first stitch and here is my last stitch on my other hook so there really isn't an obvious join there it just looks like it's normal. Here is another real quick tip and I'm gonna put the camera back up a little bit because you need to see me. <laughs> but a quick tip on how I keep everything on these hooks which this is what it looks like. All those loops on there and they will slide off trust me it has happened to me you don't know how many times but with Tunisian crochet it is super easy to fix. But if I'm going to pack this away and put it in my bag to carry with me, this was actually Steve's idea. I picked it, well Steve and I combined, but we picked these up at Dollar Tree. These are the small little clippy thingies, clamps. There is one, two, three, there's six of them in a package. I would like to get one more package, and the reason for that is so I could put one of these per hook and it hooks right there and it won't come off because the end of the hook that's what I would like to do I'd like to, like to get another package but because I don't have enough to do that with right now what I do is I put two hooks through there and it holds it pretty good just make sure that you're hook parts are going opposite directions. Yes, it can slide out, but it holds it a lot better than if there was nothing there. Trust me. Do the same on that one. And then I've got two more ends here. Uh-oh. Oh, whew. Well, since I've got four more hooks, I did the two like that, and the rest of them I'm just going to put the one on. I'll get some more tomorrow night. We're going to be out and about. Get another package of these. So here we go. I now have my project secured. All four hooks. It's kind of weird. I know you need a big project bag for this, but now my project is secure and I can stick it in my bag and take it with me without fear that a whole bunch of stitches are going to come off. So anyway, I hope you enjoyed that little tidbit of information, the little tips that I showed you and showing you how I do this now. I will put a link down in the description for the book that I found this in. It is a free book that you can download online for absolutely free and read it. There's some interesting projects in there. However, most of the projects have you do like Tunisian knit, but I'd rather do simple. It's so much simpler. <laughs> so anyway, like I said, I want to thank you guys for joining me. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you do, give me a thumbs up. Leave me and let me know down in the comments below. And I will see you in my next video.